stay in the same spot as I filmed the one year anniversary video. Simon's Tales, another one. Where did we leave it? I'm losing track. We'd had the grand opening. We'd run for a couple of weeks. Everything was going really well. Frozen was a great mama stand. More and more girls. After that two weeks, initial two weeks, more and more girls came and joined the bar. Let me put a bit better light here. See if I can get it better. <laughs> more and more girls came, signed up and joined the bar. Um, as I say, Sue was there quite often and the cashier was there all the time. Sue was part-time living upstairs in the one office, which was a bit weird. And her other half was at the uh, soapy massage in that building. I was living in the room upstairs with a jacuzzi. Best room in the house. Uh, we had six rooms that were short time use. Um, but there were actually two more rooms on the top that hadn't been used for that in the past. And after the couple of weeks, there was so much money coming in for those rooms used in the evenings. Sue decided to do a light renovation on those two rooms and move the security guard, Rung and his missus, up to one. And they just needed a clean out and paint and things. But she moved that up to free up another room for business. Um, and then she did one completely, had it done out, as, and it was quite a large room, um, slightly better room, so that she might be able to get uh, a bit more money. But it was still sort of average room, just better paint. So we ended up with eight rooms after about four weeks in, five weeks in, they were all done, and we were up and running with eight rooms. More money, brilliant. So girls started coming. We were up to about 12 girls, if I remember rightly. Um, and the girls from Sue's Soap and Massage were starting to wander off. As new girls came, they'd replace them, and the girls would disappear off. The hardest part was Frozen having to teach these new girls to be as good as these soapy girls because they were like animals. They were like a pack on walking street dragging people in. We still didn't have uniforms. Sue was umming and ahhing about uniforms and, and the style, which I thought would be a better idea. And she, in the end, just, no, let's not bother. Let's save the money. Which one of the first times she ever said to me, let's save money. I don't remember her saying that before. So we never ended up with any uniforms, which was a shame because it would have been good. Would have given the bar, um, sort of, it would have finished it off. But the money was coming in. We were getting more and more customers. The girls were using the rooms upstairs so much. We began to hit 21,000 baht a night, 22,000 some nights. And we were still low season heading towards it must have been about august september we weren't far off it, high season the light keeps changing um it, it was you know it, it was looming i still was trying to find my feet i was interacting with customers more um and the pool table i started to get customers that wanted to join the team and we were due to start the the weekly pool contest that all the bars would once a week they'd play at home or away you'd get a team you'd go away get free food and when you were at home you had to sort food out for the visiting team this is where the first time sue's husband came and got involved he was a quite a good chef um, and as we got into these pool competitions in the league he would do the food and supply it all. So that was the first time he started getting into the bar and making appearances. So it was going really well. I was learning the ropes. We had the DJ Friday, Saturdays. The girls were great. Frozen was brilliant. Things started to settle down. I had the company bike there and the I wasn't working every night. Change that light again. I was working. I was making myself have a night off every week, uh, and also Frozen would take a night off, and one of the other girls would stand in. 
so we'd agreed this with Sue I was doing six nights we were open from about five in the evening till two three in the morning by the time we'd got through to two three in the morning as a bar manager I mean it, imagine some who open work on their own with a few girls and you're there from 10 in the morning till 3 in the morning it just takes over your life but I was finding free drink customers buying you drinks as the regulars started to come I was finding I was drinking quite a bit um, so I was dropping onto soft drinks and limiting my drinking because you can't be drunk every night of the week I'd end up my livers would be no good at all so I was I was quite mindful of that and also I needed to get out of the building because I was living there as well to get food and force myself out so every evening I'd force myself out for an hour early evening and go off on the bike and get food at different places and walk and fresh air but I had the day um, I wouldn't get up till gone lunchtime and I started to force myself to get up earlier and go for walks down the beach and walk around but the whole opening of bar sort of took over my life and I had no inclination to have a girlfriend or get involved at all. And I stopped going out at night because I was always working. But it started to change after, as we moved forward, everything was going great after a couple of months of running the bar, high season approaching, as I said, I started to go out at the end of the night at two in the morning if it went quiet we'd be closing so all the girls would go off and get food or they'd go off to the nightclub so I started sometimes joining them or I'd go off on at two three in the morning because everything was still going in Walking Street you had the clubs open and things and I'd go off and have a wander off and go around a few bars and again Sue was giving me a little bit of money because it was extra money to advertise the bar bring new customers in so I took advantage of that <laughs> that was more free <laughs> beer and things but I did find myself um, starting to look at out for a girlfriend again um, and but as a bar manager and because of the rooms the amount of traffic of girls from other bars coming in they they got to clock me, you know, they, they spotted me, knew who I was, I'd say hi and things. So when I started going out, especially local to the bar, those girls that were coming and using the rooms, I'd walk into a bar and they'd, one of them would be there and recognise me and start talking. And so it was, <laughs> things led, one thing led to another and um, before, you re before you know it, you're... Uh, looking for a girlfriend it's like buy i suppose looking for a girlfriend in potato is like it's like buying a, a new car you're <laughs> that's a good analogy you, you you go around all the dealerships and you look at all the different models and you try out all the different models take them for a spin and see what added extras come with each car you know so they have massage seats and leather seats good stereo <laughs> you're gonna crucify me for that one aren't you i know you are so yeah, I was out looking for a new car, <laughs> trying out um, different young ladies, looking for a girlfriend. I wanted, uh, but I didn't want a girl who worked in a bar because I worked in a bar and you get to see everything. So I was, the more restaurants and cafes I went to, I started chatting to those girls um, and in the shops and the 7-Elevens and the the supermarket and in, in like the, the top supermarket and the, the Mike shopping mall and things on the walking down the beach you know you after you've been there a while you start thinking oh, you're always looking for that different the jewel in the crown the diamond the young lady that is the diamond the one and you're always looking as well for first instincts is, is the beautiful girl um, you know, the Lamborghini, the Porsche, the Ferrari, <laughs> and I couldn't find, I, again, whether it was because I was drinking so much, whether the bar, the actual hours, I just couldn't settle. I could not settle at all. It was really, really hard. 
um, ended up having lots of friends, girlfriends, you know, but not a girlfriend. And it, it get a bit tiresome after a while. It's just too much of that sort of thing. And it again, I started pulling back, spending more time concentrating how to promote the bar and things. So yeah, very strange time that was in the early days. I never knew what it'd be like as a bar manager. Didn't know, had no idea. And you get up days, up and down in your mind. You get a bit depressed one day, you're happy the next. Little things happen, the girls have arguments in the bar and it's, oh, it's a, it's a journey. It is a, it's like riding a wave. Um, like being on a roller coaster but I was learning so so much but like anything uh, as it went all so well then things a few things started going wrong we were approaching the high season more customers started coming in the money was good and the money was rising um, we were a couple of months away from Christmas and the boss's husband he was in every week doing the food for the every other week for the food for the pool contest but he started spending more time in the bar and that was quite quite strange because he didn't speak hardly any English there was obviously something going on with him and his uh, missus um, he didn't seem to like me <laughs> even though he was he was friendly enough but it was he, he just sort of we didn't really click at that time we didn't click but he started spending more and started spending more time drinking in the bar of course free it's his bar it's Sue's bar and he yeah he started spending more and more time um, maybe on the next video I will explain how it went and what happened but at this point where well, it must have been end of September the pool team People came on holiday, they'd come and play for a week or two and disappear. We were always struggling to get players. Um, because all the people that were expats already had their favourite bars and they were playing for those bars. So we were average in this little pool league, but we were doing okay. I was... I think at that point, I wanted to get back into playing pool and trying to earn some extra money. The 20,000 baht a month I was earning was going on food and aerobics fitness classes whatever you want to call it it was going i was spending it uh very easily very easily so that wasn't so good um come christmas which i'll go into i did get a bit of a rise and i got i think a couple of thousand baht extra a month was it maybe three thousand but i did get a little bit of a rise which was good because we were doing so well but yeah, very hard time that uh, setting up a bar and the first few months. I was quite lucky because it was an enclosed bar and I had a free room and the package was good. But for people setting up an open bar where they've got to pay for a room for themselves as well and run the bar and make money, very hard. This is, remember, this is back in 2001, I think it was so not as many bars around now there's probably five times as many bars even harder i wouldn't like to try in 2018 i would not like to try and run a bar it must be the cutthroat the business so many people fighting for less tourists or different types of tourists and a shorter uh, high season anyway Everything's good. Frozen was good. Sue was good. Hubby was drinking a bit in the bar. I had my jacuzzi. That was an amazing jacuzzi as well. <laughs> I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Have a good day. Bye for now.